In this video we're going to take a look at RMS voltage. I've gotten a lot of questions about this, so I thought we'd put a video together to talk about this. Uh, RMS voltage is really the measure of the magnitude of an AC voltage uh, that will deliver the same power to a load as an equivalent DC voltage. So it's kind of the equivalent DC level, if you will, of an AC voltage. And it's not necessarily the same thing, and typically not the same thing as the AC voltage is average, as we'll see. Uh, so uh, what we're talking about is if I have an, an, an AC voltage here applied to the load, what value of DC would apply that or deliver that same power to that load? That DC level would be equal to the RMS level of the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage. Kind of working the other way from a DC standpoint, calculating you know, power delivered to a load is very simple, right? Voltage squared divided by the load resistor, you know, if it was 5 volts and 1,000 ohms, Okay, maybe uh, you know we'd have 25 milliwatts there. Pretty simple calculation. But for the AC signals that uh, you know kind of balanced around zero and looks like this, uh, the calculation isn't so easy because the voltage isn't constant; it's continually changing. So we'd really have to kind of calculate power incrementally all the way through this waveform. Okay. Now uh, you know most people know that for a sine wave, you know there's a you see this formula of uh, you know, the RMS voltage is equal to the peak voltage okay you know the peak as defined like that the peak voltage divided by square root of 2 which is the same thing as the peak voltage multiplied by 0 0.707 and that's obviously not the same thing as the average right because the average of this voltage is zero we spend as much time above zero as we do below so if we average that out that would be zero so obviously that's not the RMS voltage okay because that wouldn't deliver any power if we calculated it out as the average so, uh, so the RMS voltage, this thing comes from something somewhere, right? This factor. Now, we, we're not going to go through the uh, the math, you know, the calculus that would actually show where that factor comes from, but we'll just kind of more prove it from a practical standpoint. Um, so that's what this uh, this we're going to do down here. So let's take a practical look at it. The RMS stands for root mean square, and in other words, it's taking the square root of the average of the squares. Uh, the square voltages. Okay, now for sine waves, let's kind of picture a sine wave that looks like this. Let's consider one cycle of that. And if we look at the voltage every 30 degrees, uh, at 30 degrees we're at a half a volt, if, you know, assuming a one volt peak, 60 degrees we're at 0.866, 90 degrees we're at a volt, and then as we work our way back down these same voltages repeat, repeat 0 0.866, 0 0.50, minus 0.5, etc. So if we just simply run through this calculation for RMS, what we want to do is first compute the squares. So if I take all of these sample voltages across that sine wave, here's the sample voltages, okay, 0, 0.5, 0 0.866, etc. We take the squares, there they are, 0, 0.25, 0.751, and then those values all repeat all the way down for the rest of the cycle. So I've computed the squares. Now let's take the mean or average of those, right? The mean is just the sum divided by the number of values. We're going to go from 0 to this 2.5, which is the next to last point. Because the next point, okay, which would be this point right here, is really the first point on the next cycle. Okay, so we're not going to include that one. Okay, so we're going to include one complete cycle. So it's kind of like going through here and saying, okay, I'm at 0, then I'm at 0 0.5, 0 0.866, 1, etc. As we go all the way through here, this last value holds to the end of that waveform. The next one is for the next cycle. So we're only going to include these first 12 values. If we add those up, it's actually pretty easy to see. 0.25 and 0.75, that's 1, plus another one is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the total is 6. The mean of that would be 6 divided by the 12 points, or 0.5. Then we take the square root of the mean, okay, so the RMS voltage is the mean, the uh, square root of the mean voltages. The mean voltage, mean of the squares is 0.5, so the square root of 0.5 is 0 0.707. There's our magical number. So uh, if we look at that on the, uh, you know, I've got a uh, 2 volt peak to peak or plus or minus 1 volt sine wave being generated here. If I look at these two meters, this one is a Fluke 87, a true RMS meter. It's reading about 1% high. I'm not too concerned about that. And then this meter here is a, is a non-true RMS reading meter, and it's reading about the same as well. Because non-true RMS meters will kind of assume that 0.707 reading. We look at the waveform on the scope. It just looks like a sine wave. 
the measurement down there of the RMS about 0.707. So everything all kind of agrees. So for sine waves that's pretty easy and just about everything will make an accurate measurement. So, uh, but when we take a look at square waves, uh, things aren't so easy. So let's switch the uh, waveform over here to square and uh, see what we've got. For square waves, if we have a simple AC square wave that's balanced around zero, the RMS value is almost trivial, okay? Because uh, we, we recognize that I've got a, a peak voltage across the load here. I also have that same peak voltage just in the other direction here. So essentially, we we'll always have that same peak voltage across the load. So the RMS value is simply equal to the peak, you know, for any duty cycle, okay? And uh, we can kind of see that here. I've got that same two volt peak to peak, okay? My true RMS reading multimeter reads at about one volt, which is what it should, okay? It's because this is going between plus and minus one, one volt. So that's reading that. But the non-true RMS reading meter is not reading it correctly, okay? That's reading a little bit high because it's improperly using that 0.707 factor because that AC, this signal is not a sine wave. Okay, if we look at the scope, it's a square wave you know, centered around zero. And if we look at the, the reading down here, we can see that that is reading just about uh, one volt as well. So the scope is doing it right. The true RMS meter is reading it correctly, but the non-true RMS reading is not. So again, so the, the caution here is to watch out for the you know, DMM readings. True RMS meters will read fine, but non-true RMS readings will be wrong because they assume that 0.701 707 uh, factor. So what about digital uh, waveforms, like a pulse width modulated waveform? Okay, it gets a little more complicated because let's assume that we've got voltages that go from zero to some peak voltage, zero to some peak voltage, okay, and assuming the low is equal to zero, let's compute the RMS for that. Okay, for 50% duty cycle, we could say, well, when we're off, we're at zero volts, so, you know, our voltage and our square voltage is zero. When we're on, the voltage is at VP, you know, the peak voltage, and then it's at V peak squared. So uh, we compute the mean of that is simply V peak squared divided by two. We just have two samples there, uh, or therefore V peak squared times the duty cycle in a more general sense. And then if we take the square root of that, uh, we essentially are left with the RMS voltage is equal to the peak voltage multiplied by the square root of the duty cycle. For 50% duty cycle, uh, the peak voltage, uh, the average voltage is V peak times 0.5, but the RMS voltage is V peak times 0.707. So again, the average and RMS voltages are not the same. So, um, so you really want to little be, be a little bit careful about that. So let's set that up here. I'm going to go until put a one volt offset on this, so that now this voltage, if we look at it on the scope, Okay, it's starting at zero and going up to two volts peak to peak. Now the scope is reading the RMS voltage correctly at about 1.4 volts. Okay, well, in this case it's two volts, um, or excuse me, the peak voltage times 0 0.707. Okay, so that's our, our 1.4 volts, 1.42 volts. But let's take a look at our, our multimeters. The true RMS meter is reading one volt. That's wrong. The Non-true RMS reading is still reading 1.1 volts. That's wrong. And the reason for that is that both of the, the DMMs will typically AC couple the signal, okay, which is not correct. It's removing the DC offset. So both of these are going to read wrong, even a true RMS meter. So what you really need to do is to see um, is that if your true RMS uh, reading meter says that it reads AC plus DC in the true RMS mode, then it will read correctly but most DMMs will AC couple these signals uh, and remove that D DC offset and therefore read the RMS value of this waveform incorrectly. So uh, just uh, something to be careful of, especially if you're using the RMS voltage to calculate uh, the amount of power that's dissipated in a load or that you're gonna deliver from a source so that you don't uh, underestimate it by uh, believing the meter without seeing what's going on. So anyway, I hope this was helpful give you a little bit better understanding of what we mean by RMS voltage. Thanks again for watching.